Happy Friday the 13th, Penguins fans. And in typical Friday the 13th fashion, it was not good for the Penguins. They dropped this one 4-1 to one to the Winnipeg Jets. Everything that could go wrong went wrong for this one with the Penguins. In this episode, we're going to fully recap everything in this game. The good, well, very little good. The bad, for the most part, the goaltending, everything from this one. Then I'll get you all ready to go for the game against the Carolina Hurricanes on Saturday. That's all coming up right after this drop. Your Locked On Penguins, your daily podcast on the Pittsburgh Penguins, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Locked On Penguins podcast. I am your host, Hunter Hodes. Remember to follow me on Twitter at Hunter Hodes. Follow the show's Twitter at Eleanor Store Penguins. And of course, thank you all so much for making this your first listen of the day. So the Penguins <clears throat> just did not have it in this one against the Jets on Friday night. They dropped one four to one to the Jets. Um, <clears throat> you know, I don't the first period they came out guns and blazing. They got a couple of shots on net, testing David Riddick as the period went on. They kind of started to take their foot off the gas pedal a little bit, though. The Penguins did have the edge um in high danger chances, uh scoring chances. Um, of course, he was about dead even though. But in terms of scoring chances and hiding your chances, the Penguins did have the edge. But after that, it was just a total garbage uh, from the Penguins. They were awful in the second and third periods, and they got what they deserved in this one. Did not have their legs, and I have their toes. They didn't have anything um, in this one. The top six went cold, which means the bottom six has to do something. And sure, Drew O'Connor had a nice goal, and I still want to see more of him. But other than him down there, um, no one played well. I think, honestly, barely anyone played well in the Penguins tonight. This was a collective team failure um, by the Penguins. And, you know, <clears throat> they got what they deserved at the end of the day. You know, we, you can honestly end the episode <laughs> after that. But, you know, of course, I have to at least talk for 20 to 25 to 30 minutes here for you all. But there's a lot. It's just a lot of bad. Um, you know, there's only so much Dustin Tokarski can do. I mean, he, 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 he's a third string goalie here, people. It was. So obviously, I think the right call to start Tokarski in this one. But at the end of the day, you know, how much are you really asking of him? You know, okay, didn't look that good on the first goal, though the defensive coverage was pretty bad. I think he spit a couple rebounds out like a Pez dispenser. But, you know, his defense, his end zone coverage by the rest of his teammates was not good in the slightest. Uh, it, it was very bad, um, to say the least. You know, he was playing well in the second period, keeping the Penguins in it. I should say, you know, the first, what, 17, 18 minutes of that period, it's still 1-1. Penguins are trying to get to the intermission tied at one, see what you can do in the third period. But nope, Winnipeg scores two goals in 20 seconds to really just, you know, put that game out of reach. To, to be honest, Jens, once the Jets went up 3-1 going into the third, I, I had really bad vibes. You know, even when it was 2-1, to be honest, you know, and, and just because of how the team was playing, you know, they got blitzed um, in that second period. The Jets... Um, they had 63% of the shot attempts in that second period. They also had 70% of the screen chances, and they also had 80% of the high danger chances and 67% of the expected goals for, you know, just you know, complete and utter domination against the Penguins. You can say that, oh, yeah, this team's old, this team is stale and all that, but at the end of the day, <clears throat> did anyone see Marcus Pedersen being sick going into this game? No. Jeff Petrie is still out, though I don't think it's going to be too much longer. Chris Tang still is out as well. You have three of your top four defensemen gone. Two of your bottom six forwards are out. Oh, and yeah, your all-star goalie from last year is hurt right now. And I don't think he's coming back for the next couple of weeks with a groin injury. So they were already up a creek heading into this game. And it got worse when before the game, Sullivan announced, or the Penguins announced, excuse me, that Pedersen is out day to day with an illness. It's probably the one I've been dealing with for the last 10 to 11 days, this stupid cough or slash cold that will not go away for whatever reason. Yeah, we just got some snow here in Western Pennsylvania. But my God, uh, he probably does have the same thing that I have, uh, to be honest. And it's act actually at the point where Sullen, you know, didn't rule him out for Saturday, but said like, yeah, it's day to day. You know, it's you know, we'll have to see how he feels uh, for that game against the Hurricanes. So, you know, <clears throat> going into this one, I thought it was going to go one or two ways. They were going to squeak out, you know, win two one, three two, something like that, or they were going to get blown out. The latter obviously happened, and the Penguins got what 
they deserved. Uh, you know, if, if you, you want to make things look even bleaker here. Um, if I can actually just copy that real quick, excuse me. There we go. I want to make things even bleaker here um, for you all. A whole lot of UGLY ugly in terms of the hockey stat scores, the game score with Dom Luchuskin and data from Natural Stat Trick. Um, Brian Dumoulin and Mark Freeman were at the bottom. So Dumoulin, after having the best game of his season, goes down to the bottom. And yes, funny enough, Dumoulin and Friedman were on the top pairing. You guys can go at Mike Sullivan for that. That's understandable. I, I would not have done, I would not have chosen Dumoulin and Friedman to be on my top pairing. That's that's for sure. Um, but you know, anyone I think that's really going at Sullivan for this loss, I don't think can see the forest for the trees. What do you expect him to do with the cards that he has been dealt right now? The bottom six weeks, three of his best defensemen are hurt. His goalie is hurt. And I know people can sit here and say to me, well, they won games last year without four of their five of their forwards in the lineup at a time. And yeah, I get that. But this is also a different season. You know, I mean, sometimes you don't get the same results. You know, the top six was cold again tonight. The bottom six is not going to be able to help you out most nights because it is not constructed in a way to do that. The bottom six is constructed in a way to play low event hockey, to not allow anything at either end so that the scorers or the big money players in the top six can go out and score the goals for you and win the games. That is how Ron Hextall constructed this team. It's flawed, it's stupid, and it's not working out halfway through the season. We are bas- we are officially at the half po- halfway point at the halfway point right now. 41 games to go. You know, this is a very large sample size. If Ron Hextall can't see what needs to be done, he needs to be shown the door. It is past time for this general manager to come out of hibernation, where those grizzly bears are in Alaska, underneath the snow, January weather, negative degrees, and all that stuff, where they're, you know, they're 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 reserved for the winter. They they stocked up on their fat reserves and stuff. And then in the spring, they can go out and eat more because they'll be hungry. You know, that's where Ron Hextall is right now. He's out in Alaska hibernating with grizzly bears. Right. I mean, but the funny thing is he needs to be out here not hibernating, even though it's cold. Funny thing. And he needs to be going out here and making moves to help this team win. At the end of the day, that is what needs to happen. Yeah. Okay. They don't have cap space. Yeah. There's some guys injured, but you know what? <clears throat> the best GMs in the league find a way year after year after year. Julian Brisbane, Joe Sackick, even Don Sweeney in Boston. He's built a heck of a team this season. It's past time for this GM to do something to help out the head coach because right now, the coach, he's playing the only cards that he has, really. You know, he's just a, a poor man's poker player at a table, being dealt the hand that he has, and he's losing money. Except right now, he's losing hockey games. That's that's the reality of the situation, guys. And I know it didn't get any prettier tonight. I know the hot takes are hot, especially on social media, but I'm not going to get too fired up about this one just because of, you know, who's in, who's out right now, and how Mike Sullivan just – so he's been dealt a really bad hand all year because this roster, I think, is very flawed um, construction-wise. I mean, at, least, at, least, at least that's just how I see it. Um, coming up in the second segment, I'm going to get into some individual players who I think need to be a lot better heading into Saturday's game. And then in the segment, we'll just touch quickly as well on the Carolina game. But before we get to that, if you're looking for a delicious treat but don't want all that fat and calories, then you've got to try a Bilt Bar. We just got through this holidays, and I know my goal is to eat a little healthier this year. If you're like me, where you want to eat healthier but don't want to compromise taste, then man, I've got just a thing for you. You got to try Built. With Built, healthy is actually tasty. Seriously, they're so delicious, you won't think they're good for you. They're perfect for your New Year's resolution. What makes Built Bars so good? Well, for starters, they are covered in 100% real chocolate. That's right, real chocolate. And they come in unbelievably, unbelievable flavors like churro, peanut butter, brownie, and coconut almond. I'm not sure how they do it, but these bars taste like a candy bar while maintaining amazing macros. And what's even better is that they are healthy. Only 130 calories and 4 grams of sugar with a whopping 17 grams of protein. If you're close to a Sam's Club or you're near a Walmart, you can go grab a 13-bar box with our hit flavors, brownie batter, and churro. You can definitely thank me later with that one. All right. I'm back here on this episode of the Locked on Penguins podcast. I am your host, 
Hunter Hodes Murdo. Follow me on Twitter at Hunter Hodes. Follow the show's Twitter at Eleanor Star Penguins. And of course, thank you all so much for making this your first listen of the day. So other individual player performances. I just, for some reason, maybe I'm talking too fast. I apologize. Other individual player performances that I did not really care for tonight. I've already touched on Dumoulin and Friedman. I would not have that as my top pairing tomorrow if Marcus Pedersen can't play. That is just a very foolish decision by Sully. Again, I know he's being dealt a really crappy hand right now, but put put POJ up there. I mean, that's just common sense. Um, I don't think Freeman should be up there, um, but that's just me um, as well. I think Ricard Raquel had a very uncharacteristically bad night. Um, he missed a couple golden chances throughout this game that he could have buried. Jason Zucker also struggled as well, though. I will say this about Zucker. If you all know me and you've been listening to this podcast for you know the last few weeks, last few months, even the last couple of years, um, I'm not a big fan of fighting. Never have been. I don't like it. I don't think it's good for the game. I think it's stupid. I think it's useless. I will say I liked what Zucker did tonight by fighting Brendan Dillon. That's probably one of the only times I would say this because he looked like the only player on the ice who actually gave a crap. You know, he dropped the gloves. He was trying to get his team into it. You know, Mike Sullivan even spoke of this week how Zucker's always trying to get the team into the fight. He's like, you know, just the perfect locker room guy, but he's also great on, on the ice too, just because his production this year has been awesome. Uh, I know what he was doing there. I applaud him for it. It's just, you know, they responded with a couple of nice shifts. I'll say that. But after that, um, just a lot of total other garbage, um, I would say, by the Penguins. And they gave up that fourth goal to Shifley, and, you know, that was curtains. Um, but I liked what he did. You know, again, I don't like the fighting just because of the concussion lawsuit and just with Chris Pronger and Mark Savard and all these other players over the years have gotten concussions from fighting all that. It's just, it's, it's not for me. And again, you can see the stats decline every year with fighting. But again, um, I'll eat my words with this one and say that, you know, I appreciated what Zucker did. And I like that he was trying to get the team fired up, even though the team was playing like total crap. Um, you know, again, Raquel was not that good. I thought Sid kind of meh tonight. Jake Jake was the same way. Um, I, I Hopefully they'll respond on this hour tonight. But, you know, tonight, um, d- definitely not good enough to say, at least if you go down to the floor of lines here, um, if I can find it. You know, Denzel Crosby, Rust, they had 56% of the shot attempts at five on five, but only 44% of the scoring chances. And then, Expected goals, decent though, 60%. But in terms of scoring chances, you know, not not a lot um, there for them. I, you know, they're, they're going to have to be a lot better um, on Saturday against the Hurricanes. Um, other players, Ty Smith, I think this was probably one of his worst games as a Penguin. He looked really uh, bad on that fourth goal from Shifley. Uh, his second, that was Shifley's second of the game, of course. But he just kind of got ragdolled around in the defensive zone. Uh, had a bad turnover and just you know didn't wasn't didn't, wasn't able to recover. And the thing with Smith is, you know, I said this on my Thursday episode and earlier this week as well. You know, <clears throat> the tools are there. He's a very flashy player. Good offensive instincts. Good first pass. Can really carry the puck up the uh, in the zone. Okay in transition. Needs some work. But real what he, where he really needs the most work is his defensive game. That was the big knock on him coming out of the draft from New Jersey coming over in the John Marino trade was that defensive work. Kyle Reardon obviously is going to have, I think, more time with him for really work on that. But you saw some of those issues tonight with Smith with his, with his defensive work. Just not good enough. Again, it's only been a few. It's still only, it hasn't, I don't even think it's been 10 games yet with him. He's probably going, he's going to be fine, I think. But tonight, definitely not one of his finest performances, to say the least. Um, you know, outside of Drew O'Connor, I think the, the rest of the bottom six, well, actually, part of me. Also, Drew O'Connor and Kasperi Kapanen because that was a very nice pass on the Penguins' lone goal tonight. Also, congratulations to Cappy for 100 career assists. Very nice job. Outside of those two, the rest of the bottom six absolutely stunk tonight. And that has been par for the course game after game after game. And I'll keep saying it. When the top six is not doing a goddamn thing, the bottom six is not going to be up, is not going to be up to the challenge to help you out it's just it's not okay yeah drew o'connor got a goal tonight where are the other goals coming from because better captain's playing better but you know he's still not scoring a lot of goals for you Danton heinen i haven't heard his name since october teddy bluger has one goal this year and yeah i get that bluger's a very good pk guy i get that he's very good with his end zone draws defensively and all that stuff but you know is it really that hard to ask for more than one goal from your fourth line center, I mean, come on here, people. I mean, that's that's not good enough. Jeff Carter 
half of his goals this season are basically empty netters. Uh, so that's not, <laughs> excuse me, <clears throat> that's not good enough either. And, you know, Brock McGinn, I've praised him a lot this season because he has been better than expected. But over his last 10 games, it's been a struggle. In his last 10 games, stats right here for you. One goal, zero assists. This is over 100 plus minutes of ice time at 5v5. 29% expected goals for percentage. I tried to warn people who were drinking some of that Kool-Aid on social media and stuff. You were telling me, oh yeah, McGinn's going to keep up this pace for the rest of the season. No, he's not. You know, you can, you know, r r ride the wind while it's going. You know, it's a legendary poison song. You know, if, if you know, I'm a big 80s rock guy. Ride the Wind by Poison off their album, Flesh and Blood. You know, great, great song, great band. Obviously using them as a reference here. Again, you can ride the wind for it. But was that ever going to stay the, for an 82 games for a full season? No. No. Not even close. If you thought that, I mean, you, know, you kind of set yourself up to fail. Well, that one, last 10 games, he's only scored one goal. It was bound to come down. You know, that's just, that's the nature of being a bottom six player. And then it's showing again, that falls on the general manager for not getting a good enough bottom six that can help spell the top six when they have bad games. And I know the entire team stung tonight. I know they are very banged up with three of their four best defensemen out and their starting goaltender is out. But, you know, it will be nice if one game, one game, the bottom six could really carry this team to a win and not just have one goal from Drew O'Connor and then, you know, another game. Oh, we get one occasional one from Kasperi Kappen or, you know, oh, okay, Brock McGinn goes on a heater, you know, in, in, in a stretch where no one else is scoring either. Again, it's just, it's not good enough. And I'll say it again, it is past time for the general manager to make a change. It just, it has to happen. No. It's just not good enough right now. And if this team is serious about winning a cup, you, you Ron Hextall showed that he was all in. He was all in this offseason. Sign back the guys. Okay. Are you doing anything to help them right now? No, you're sleeping on you're sleeping during games. You're not checking your phone. It is time to do something. This roster right now, even when those all those guys are back, it's not good enough. It hasn't been good enough. All year. We've seen it in flashes. Had a great two months where they rolled it over the league, but the same issue still persisted. They're they're persisting even worse right now, to say the least. Um, that'll do it for the second segment, though. Coming up in the final segment, I'm gonna get you all ready for the game against the Carolina Hurricanes. But before we get to that, my wonderful bet online promo right up here for you. If I can just get to the thing here. BetOnline is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. You get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there. From pro football to college bowl season to basketball, we've got it all at BetOnline.net. And if you love sports podcasts, you can find those at BetOnline as well. We're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting info. You can head to the website today or use your motor device to learn more. That is BetOnline, where the game starts. All right, I'm back here on this episode of the Locked On Penguins podcast. I am your host, Hunter Hodes. Remember to follow me on Twitter at Hunter Hodes. Follow the show's Twitter at Lawrence Penguins. And of course, thank you all so much for making this your first listen of the day. So Saturday, it's not going to get any easier. You're going down to Raleigh to play the Carolina Hurricanes. They're it's about 10:30 right now that I'm recording this. You know, they're on the plane right now, probably. Um, Casey De Smith is going to get the start tomorrow. I just don't see a way the Penguins win this game with how they looked on Friday against a Jets team that I'm not even fully sold on. But they looked very good. I'll say that. Top six looks good. And I think the Penguins would have behooved them to play a little more of a defensive first game, especially with all those great players out. Um, I think they just tried to open it up a little too much against the Jets. And I think they paid the price, especially late in the second period, when the Jets scored two goals in 22 seconds. Tomorrow, they're going to have to really dumb it down against the Canes. And I know that's easier said than done. The Canes are they are good at what they do. They fire a lot of pucks at you. They just had 62 shots against the Devils. Earlier this week, they had what, almost what 70 against the National Predators two weeks ago. Basically, they are very good at what they do. And, you know, the Penguins, they're going to have to be ready for it because this time, Sebastian Ajo is back. I don't know if Max Pacioretty is playing. He came out of the game on Thursday um, with an injury. I mean, but if he's playing, the Penguins, it gets even worse. Frederick Anderson is starting, I think, for the Canes. 
Um, that's is going to be probably the toughest game of the season for the Penguins to win as of, as of late. You know, you're probably going to need a legacy. I, I mean, I wouldn't say a legacy game, but you're going to need um, the top six to really carry you in this one because I don't trust the bottom six to do anything against Carolinas at all. The Hurricanes are very deep. Defensively, they're great. They get great goaltending. They're well coached. Um, this is going to be a really tough game for Pittsburgh to win, you know, even to just get a point. To be honest, I think you're also going to need to see Casey DeSmith have a very good game as well. Um, you know, he's obviously going to be pretty fired up after what happened last, uh, uh, his last start on Tuesday where he got pulled just basically 10 minutes into the game. Um, he's going to need to be really good. You know, last time against the Hurricanes, I thought he played okay, but he still had a couple of goals that, you know, just were not that good. And, you know, th through the first two periods, he only allowed one goal against the Canes. He actually was making a lot of dazzling saves. He'll need to do that in this one, but I also think he'll need to um, just be able to close it out this time. The Penguins will need to find their legs, find their toes, just find another gear um, to their game, really. Um, it's just, it's not good enough right now. And again, I know the injuries are really bad. And I know Mike Sullivan's been dealt a really bad hand, but, you know, sometimes you got to play that hand and, and do it the best you can. And the Penguins, you know, they need a result right now because, you know, the Islanders, they're right behind them. I know the Penguins have two games in hand on them, but you know, that only matters if you win those games in hand. If you don't win those games in hand, you know, I don't know if the Islanders keep winning, you know, they'll find them, the Penguins will find themselves really quickly out of the playoff spot. And right now, you know, it's, it's looking a bit dicey. We're at the halfway point in the season, Yens. It's put up or shut up time. Got to stop having these kinds of performances. I understand the, the entire team was off tonight, and I don't think the entire team will be off tomorrow, even though they always suck on the second half of back to backs. I'm pretty sure, again, the only second half of back to back they've won this year is against the Chicago Blackhawks which is not saying much because the Blackhawks are one of the worst teams in the league, but you know, they're really going to have to put together a full 60 if they're going to want to beat the Hurricanes on Saturday. Um, short shifts, playing a tight defensive game. The Hurricanes are going to get down to business and fire everything at to Smith just because he had a bad start. But if the Penguins can weather that early storm and you know keep, keep a lot of their um, attempts and their shots on goal to the outside um, and they're able to cash in, or maybe Freddie Anderson being a bit rusty coming back. And I think the Penguins potentially could score the upset win here, but you know I don't think it's the result that I'm expecting, to say the least. But again, that'll do it for this one. I really appreciate all of you listening to this episode of Locked on Penguins Podcast. I'll have another episode for you all on Monday where we'll recap the game against the Canes and then get you all um, ready to go for the game against the Anaheim Ducks. Right now, tickets for that game are um, not that bad. To be honest, the, the tickets for the game on Friday were ridiculous, like 76 of 76 per ticket up in like the biggest nosebleed in PPG. I'm like, jeez, jeez. But again, that'll do it for this one. Really appreciate all of you listening. I'll be back with you all on Monday. Have a great day.